Right now, I'd like to introduce our two guest speakers. We get two for the price of one here, not really. But I would like to welcome to the podium uh, Kaylee and Scott Marcello. Well, thank you, Dr. Comer. Uh, my name is Kaylee. I am a sophomore at Siena College, and I'm a business. I'm studying uh, business, and I was diagnosed with CF at the age of three. And this is my brother Scott. Hello, I'm Scott. Um, I'm 19 as of yesterday. I'm a freshman at RPI studying mechanical and aerospace engineering, and I was diagnosed at one when um, just about at the time Kaylee was diagnosed um, with cystic fibrosis. Um, so yeah, we're just going to talk a little bit about our lives and how Kaleidico's has changed us eventually. Um, so growing up, me and Kayla were normal kids. We played outside, we, we played sports, um, we took swimming lessons, you know, soccer, basketball, all that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, normal kids, just active, healthy kids. Um, you know, growing up, one of, the, one of the tough things that I remember was um, chest PT, because I'd get my chest pounded every day. Um, it was horrible. I cried the whole time. You know, it was, it was, it was rough. But, um, yeah, so, we were, I mean, growing up, it was, it was difficult to realize what was actually going on. We had to take pills. We had to do all these treatments, all that kind of thing. Um, but we eventually realized it um, after a while, you know, that it was, it was, it was a little bit of a different life. Um, you know, uh, compared to some people. Um, one of the first realizations I had was we went on a research trip to Philadelphia Children's Hospital. And, um, you know, that was a strange experience because we stayed in the hospital, you know, did, you know went through a few tests over the week, um, or the weekend, whatever, you know, the length of the trip. And, um, yeah, it was strange. I was, you know, six, seven, eight years old, something like that. Um, and it, it was weird, but, you know, it really, really opened my eyes, I guess, our, our eyes, because, um, you know, then we, we realized that there was something going on. Um, so also with a court, um, yeah, with that too, um, you know, around that time, Kaylee started to um, do nebulizer treatments and that kind of thing. Um, and that was before the vest had, you know, come into our lives, had, you know, before we started doing the vest. So um, that was strange, but a few years after, we eventually started, um, we got the vest, you know, it was exciting at first. Loved it, you know, making like funny animal noises and stuff just while shaking the whole time. Um, but it did get old pretty quick. Um, but that, you know, it, it it still still stayed on it. You know, still did it. Was pretty good with that kind of thing. Um, you know, as a child too, adherence to medications that was that was a simple thing because you know you have your parents always on you, um, as I as we still do. But um, to take medicines and do what we're supposed to do and you know have it have it uh, you know keep us healthy and how we're supposed to be. Um, so yeah. Right, like Scott said, <clears throat> um, elementary years, we were fine, normal kids. When I got to middle school and high school, um, it was a little different for me. Uh, I was kind of a rebellious teenager. I didn't want to admit that I had CF. So I stopped taking care of myself um, on a regular basis. I stopped doing my best. I stopped taking enzymes. Um, and I realized uh, that kind of caught up with me. And when I was 14 years old, I had my first hospital visit, and that was not fun, um, to say the least. I realized that, okay, this is real, I have to start taking care of myself better. And I would do that for a couple weeks after I got out of the hospital, and then I stopped taking care of myself again. And it was a rigorous cycle, um, and that happened for a couple years until I got to college and I started college. Um, that was also an interesting experience as well. Um, it was stressful meeting new people, um, telling people about CF, which I'm uncomfortable with. I don't like to tell people that I have CF. So it was hard for me to transition to college, um, meeting new people, like I said, and getting into a cycle with doing my vest all the time and putting classes um, in between doing my vest and it was hard so I ended up stop, stopping taking care of myself again and went in the hospital um, so that was not fun either it was hard to transition but um, after that I actually withdrew from Siena and went to Hudson Valley and um, actually recently this semester, last semester, went back to Siena because of the great drug Kaleidico. So. 
Okay, so a little bit about how we learned about Kaladico. Um, a couple years ago, you know, I, I, I went on the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, the national website, pretty often. Um, mainly because I, I saw this new thing about um, a drug called, what it was called at the point, at, the, at that time was VX770, I believe. Um, and it was just, it was, it was being praised basically as one of the great drugs that was, you know, in the pipeline um, that Dr. Coleman was talking about. Um, you know, you re we read success stories and stuff about how um, during like trials there was, you know, people were, people were being, you know, improving their health, getting really healthy and, and really happy while on it um, as far as health wise. Um, so I would check back weekly, you know, just to see what happened. I would follow progress. Um, and so after a while, um, we, we never really knew we were eligible. Um, throughout this whole process, I just follow, as I was as I was following it, as we were following it, it was um, you know it was it was strange. We were excited, I was excited, but it was mainly just out of curiosity because we didn't know how how um, how or if it would affect us. So a couple weeks before it was approved, um, we went to the doctors. We were just going to a normal visit, and it was brought up. You know what what gene mutation do we have? Do we have you know G five five? 1D, and uh, so Dr. Comer looked it up, and it was kind of like, oh wow, you, you do, um, kind of thing, and it was like, okay, well this is this is awesome. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be able to have Colico. Um So yeah, so it was approved two weeks later. We were really ecstatic. Um, it took a couple of months for insurance to kick in, as far as like processing paperwork and stuff and all that kind of stuff. Um, so. Once we started, we got it eventually in April. We started taking it in April, beginning of April, and um, yeah, it was it was pretty awesome. Um, initially, I read, read reports online about um, like like claims that in 24 hours, it, you know, it basically changed people's lives. Not you know completely, but you know, it was, it was good. And I was a little disappointed at first because I didn't really feel anything after the first 24 hours, and I was it was kind of like it was kind of disappointing. But you know. It, after after some time, you know, I, I was starting to feel better and better. I was always pretty healthy, and, you know. I'd never been admitted to the hospital um, in the 17 years um, prior to that. So, you know, I was I was always pretty healthy, but I, I actually started to actually feel different. The the medicine really did help. Um, what minimal minimal amount of coughing I did have was completely gone. You know, it was I was really good um, after a little while. Um, at first, I will say that you know adherence was a little, little difficult. I didn't really, I was, uh, I was, I was transitioning also into my senior year of, of high school, and it was, it was a little difficult. You know, I didn't really want to do much, but um, uh, yeah. So the taking the medicine, you know, it was, it was a simple, it should have been a simple thing. Didn't really happen as much as it should have, but I eventually caught on to that train, and you know, started taking it um, after, after a little bit of uh, coercing from Dr. Comer. You know that he, he really keeps us on track, but um yeah so we were really excited about it. Um, the results started pouring in. You know we 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 went to the doctor. We our lung function just went up. You know I had you know at some points um, I had been at the healthiest. You know lung wise the pulmonary function tests were the best they had been in ten years. You know they really improved and it was it was great. You know we loved it and we still do. I mean you know we're still still healthy. Um, yeah, so I mean, one of my main things has been over the years, you know, keeping keeping to a good schedule, keeping, you know, taking medicines I need to take, doing the best when I should be, which is kind of an ongoing issue now too. Um, as far as college goes, you know, that's a little difficult too. But um, yeah, it's been good. Now well, I guess Kayla's gonna talk about her experience. Okay, my experience with Clydeco has been very similar to Scott's. Um, my lung function increased, my weight increased. Um, I actually like to tell this story that I, uh, before Kaladico, a year before Kaladico, um, I went on a hike in Maine. Um, we, I went with my boyfriend and his family and we hiked up um, some pretty rigorous uh, hikes and I wasn't doing too well breathing. And uh, we actually did that same hike uh, once I started Kaladico, a year after that. And it was a lot easier to do that hike. Um, I was able to breathe. I didn't need to take as many breaks as I did the year before. Um, it was a lot easier. So basically, Kaleidico has changed my life. Um, <clears throat> and I'm able to breathe easier. I am at Siena College, uh, like I said. And 
I have gotten back on track with all my medicines. I think Kaleidico actually gave me more of a, a positive outlook on life. Um, it made it more, it, it caused me to feel that I actually have a future, um, that I can live longer than I thought I was going to be able to. Um, so with Kaleidico, I definitely, I, I'm very happy um, that knowing that I do have a future ahead of me, I can have a family, I can have a great job, and all of that. So it definitely has changed both of our lives for the better, as well as our parents too. And uh, I, we know they love us. They've harped on us for years taking our medicines, and they've been a big, big support system, as well as everybody at Albany Med too. And does anybody have any questions? So do you have to take all your other support medications and best still as well? I do. Um, I take all of my medicines that I had prior to Kaleidico. I still do all of that actually with Scott. Um, yeah. I, um, yeah. Um, more recently, Dr. Comer has taken me off a few medicines. Might have been because I wasn't really taking them. <laughs> um, anyway. But, um, yeah, um, I'm still, I, I, I feel great, um, so, yeah, um, some, a lot of stuff, you know, the Creon, the, the enzymes, the, that kind of thing, the best still goes on, um, a little less than it should now for me, but it, it'll, it'll get there, but yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Sorry. Thank you. The younger ones, and um, they look up to you. And so when I go home and I explain, you know, how you guys are, you know, it's an inspiration to my younger grandson. Yeah. Um, and it makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, the other thing was is that when you said you started taking this medication, you also gained weight. Yes. Yep. Um, I gained weight. I think. Well, I. I always have ate the same. I've ate. I'm a pretty good eater. Um, and I. I did gain weight uh, while taking this medication. Um, I still take enzymes too, so that does help. But um, yeah, I gained weight, and I think that's an also another reason why my lung function did go up as well. Because you think the medication yeah. actually the <clears throat> yeah. yeah, maybe you don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for recording in, but. Um, the weight gain was something that was actually seen in all the research studies and was a big thing. The, the main re re reason for it is part of the problem with cystic fibrosis patients is because it's harder to breathe, they need to take 20 to 100% more calories in than, than other people. And Kaylee's being, being kind to me, but uh, before life though, I used to get on her case and Evelyn, our nutritionist, uh, would help me about you need to eat more, you need to eat more. Um, and then she got to the she came in the next time, and I was like, whoa, you did it. Uh, and she said, no, Dr. Comer, I didn't change my eating at all. But with the drug, since it does make, improve the lung function and make the breathing that much easier, she's not burning calories doing that, so the food she eats can go to keeping her with good nutrition. Thank you, Dr. Comer. Yes. Uh, Kaylee, you mentioned that when you were in your teenage years, um, you kind of rebelled a little bit and maybe didn't take your medication as directed and, and things like that. So my question is twofold. One, how did you not do that knowing that you're under your parents' care and your parents are trying to really push that and um, do that? And two, if you wouldn't mind just talking a little bit about um, what what did land you in the hospital, if you wouldn't mind sharing sure. um, Like I said, yes, I didn't take care of myself as much as I should have been. Um, and yes, like I said, they were a very big support system. And I think one of the things is I <coughs> did, I told them I was taking care of myself and I wasn't at the same time. So that was, that was hard to do that. But um, like I said, it was hard to admit that I had CF. So that was one of the reasons why. And um, your next part of your question, I'm sorry. What landed you in the hospital? Oh, yes. Um, what landed me in the hospital was I, my lung function decreased, my weight decreased. Dr. Comer saw that in all the results whenever I went to the hospital. Um, I also wasn't feeling well. I, 
I just felt yucky um, coughing a lot. And so we decided that the hospital doing uh, IV treatments would be best. Thank you again. You guys are great. Get on that blog or whatever you guys do and, and send that out because that's a great message for you know, to give to, to people. Um, my son's 17, we're about to do the college piece. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to, you know, if you thought back, <laughs> what would have changed that when you fell off, you kind of both, you know, college, you didn't want to do it, it's a different mm -hmm. situation. What would you say to the mom and or the 17 year old going to college of how do we get through that so we don't, um, you know, get to the same, you know, place? I would suggest, um, if I were to do it differently, I probably would have organized my um, my entire day out. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily around CF and my treatments, but making sure I had time. Um, making a chart even, um, and making a checklist, something like that, where you see that you did it, you did your medicine, you did um, your vests twice a day, mm -hmm. you know. Um, for me, I do my vest while I get ready in the morning. Um, so if that's something maybe, or if you're doing homework, do your best when you can, when you are watching TV, you know, um, something like that where don't, like, if you want to go out and hang out with your friends or something, do your best before you went out, you know, make it so that you feel better about yourself knowing that you already had done it. Um, for me, it was hard to, like I said, um, to adjust to everybody knowing or not knowing that I had CF and not telling them. So everybody thought I was always sick. So I think, like I said, doing charts maybe or just um, knowing that you have time to do your best, those treatments. Does that answer your question? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and you said, you know, um, you, what's your first name, honey? I'm sorry. Scott. Scott, you said that you had a schedule and, you know, it's different for girls than boys. I mean, I understand what you're saying. It's harder to kind of talk with what I've seen with the girls than it is with the boys. What, anything different from you? Well, my schedule, you know, didn't really exist um, much, but um, once it did, you know, and it's still, you know, I'm still working on it, but um, it's kind of like in college too, as far as going back to the college question too, really quick, um, you can plan your schedule, you know, you can, you can right. choose which classes when you take them. So it's easy to plan, you know, you can plan around lunch, you can plan around dinner, so you don't have classes during all those times. So it's easy to, you know, find places to eat, but, um, it's more like, you know, it's also easier, <clears throat> I have two roommates right now, um, and so it's kind of planning schedules around them as well. Um, you know, not as much, they're pretty understanding, they're, you know, they're both pretty awesome um, about it, but, um, you know, you, you know, sometimes you have to worry about, you know, you can't do your best when they're going to bed because it's loud and that kind of thing, so it's um, mainly just like, you know, between classes you would choose to do things, you take your medicines at a certain time, um, still working on the best thing. Still, still trying to fit that in, um, which is, you know, it's a kind of simple thing that I just haven't really, you know, it's, 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 it's a, it's a me problem, um, but, um, you know, I, I'm taking the medicines, doing, doing all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's, the, 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 it's, it's just to find the time every day and do it when, when it's comfortable. Also, one more thing, sorry. Um, I realized if I set my schedule around how I did at home. So if I did my best at home. At a certain time in the morning and at night, I did that at school. So that's another thing maybe you can do as well. Thanks. You're welcome. That's great. Yes. Perhaps a dumb question, but is Quatico just a pill swallowed with water like aspirin? Correct. It's a pill. It's probably about that big. And you take it twice a day. Um, take it before you eat, um, usually. And yep, you take it. I take it in the morning and at night, same time. Terry, you mentioned um, not really letting anybody know that you had CF. And um, my understanding is that you're a little bit more open today about having CF and living with it. Does, do you feel less pressure to keep from not having to keep a secret anymore? Yeah, a little bit. Um, no, like with Kaleidico, it's more of a, it's kind of like a guarantee medicine, like guaranteed you will live longer than if you didn't take it. So I feel better talking about it with other people to tell them, you know, oh, I'm taking Kaleidico. I don't really have that life expectancy anymore, that type of thing. So it makes me more comfortable to have that kind of as 
my like my backup, you know, to say like that I have this. So it's kind of yes, I feel a little bit more comfortable. Yes. Scott, how about you? Do you talk to your friends about? Yeah, um, I was pretty. I was always pretty outspoken about it. Um, you know, I would I would tell friends they'd see me at lunch taking uh, enzymes. You know, just like oh, what what is that? You know, and high school kids, you know, they're you know they're thinking other places. And so, um, you know, it's, it, it, was, it was weird at first, but they all, you know, understood, like, you know, I, I, I was vocal about it, you know, I told them, yeah, I've got this disease, you know, I gotta take pills, I gotta take medicines, it's just kinda normal for me. And it, was, it became, you know, after four years of high school, it became normal for all of them, too. It's just like, oh yeah, Scott's just taking his pills again, you know, so it's, yeah, so that's, that's kind of it. I was always open, comfortable about it. People were always, you know, really welcoming as far as, you know, the whole disease aspect, so. Um, I actually never skipped class uh, because of coughing or anything like that. Um, I, I didn't really tell anyone, like I said, in classes. So I wasn't too uncomfortable coughing. Like, it was just a normal thing for me. So um, I just kind of went about my day in that way. Um, but when I got to know people, it was a little more different that way. Um, and not telling them why I'm coughing. I'll just say, oh, yeah, I'm sick. I just have a cold, you know. I always have a cold, that's how I would say it. Um, but other than that, I mean, I would still go about my day with classes and things like that. Um, with the Collider Code, is it, um, I, my understanding is that you continue with your regimen as far as taking all your pills and your other types of things um, like that. <clears throat> was there, once you started taking it, was there ever a little sense of um, over security or what the word I'm looking for is that, well, since I have this pill, why would I do my best? Or why do I have to take my answer? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's kind of for me. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's exactly actually how I felt. Um, you know, I took, I started taking Kaladico and I started slacking in a lot of other things. Um, it was also with the transition to college, but mainly the, you know, the Kaladico was like, I'm taking this pill, it's making me feel better. Um, but then I, I, you know, if I'd stop a medicine, I wouldn't realize, you know, I'm starting to feel bad again. Is it, the Kaladico is not working? No, it's me not taking the other medicines. So they all kind of work hand in hand um, together, you know, to, to help make you as healthy as you can be. So, did that answer your question? Wonderful. That's great.